Hi, I'm Charles with Anycap. Previously, a trash game lover named Rekuro decided to try a god tier game for the first time. It turned out that this game valued a player's skill above all else, so Rekuro instantly loved it. He would eventually encounter a unique monster that only a handful of players have found and be defeated by it. After a little bunny joins him as a companion, Rekuro teams up with his friends Pencilgon and Katso as they prepare to fight another one of these rare unique monsters. Rekuro and his friends then make their way through the prismatic forest. Pencilgon explains that they have to find a dark spot amongst all the luminescent moss. When they find the spot, she presses on it and it reveals a secret passage. Rekuro is upset that he passed the forest without finding this area, but Pencilgon explains that finding these time-specific hidden areas is luck of the draw. She even just happened to stumble upon this place. Rekuro looks down on those with less luck than him, but Katso takes exception to this stupid face he is making. Pencilgon tells them to stop their little comedy act as they have reached their destination. This place is filled with beautiful flowers, but the team thinks that it's pretty creepy. Singing can be heard nearby, and Katso brings their attention to the singing girl. This girl is transparent, so our bird brain protagonist wonders if it's a bug in this god tier game. Katso pities his trash game loving friend, since his mind always assumes bugs over plot reasons. Pencilgon greets this NPC named Setsuna, and Rekuro takes note of how her clothes don't seem like they belong in a fantasy world. He wonders if she is from the setting's age of antiquity, the divinity. If so, she could hold the key to the unique scenario that he unlocked. Rekuro decides to introduce himself, painting himself as a man of a hundred skills, but Pencilgon interrupts him and introduces her friends as Stooge 1 and Stooge 2. They are her ace in the hole to finally put Weathermon to rest. Emil and Katso give their names, but Rekuro wants another shot at his introduction. Pencilgon admits that her new team doesn't seem like much now, but she plans to train them up before the battle. This ghost lady then says some surprising stuff, as she has never met someone with Tsuri's presence applied twice, when referring to Rekuro. On top of that, he is also accompanied by Cinderella's child. Rekuro has no clue what she is talking about, but Satsuna just says that he reminds her of someone she used to know a long time ago. She thanks him for reviving some long lost memories, but Rekuro is still completely lost. It's time to get down to business though, so a screen pops up, prompting them to begin a new unique scenario. The guys accept, so Satsuna reveals that Weatherman was her dearest love. They had a minor misunderstanding, and she passed away. Since then, all Weatherman has done his entire life is guard her grave. Satsuna has no clue how much time has passed since then, but the next thing she knew, she was in this ghost-like state. Satsuna feels no resentment about the way her life ended, but she believes that things that end should lie in the past. They shouldn't tie down someone's present or their future. She can't stand knowing that Weathermon remains tied down to her past. Weathermon used a spell she created to create a barrier around her grave, and did some other complicated stuff to make it impossible for anyone to reach its location. However, on the night of a new moon, when the moon loses all its light, a crack forms in the barrier. Katso puts it pretty bluntly and determines that all they have to do is jump through this crack and fight Weathermon. Satsuna has told them everything and just wishes that they will finally be able to put him to rest. Pencilgon tells her that they are nothing like the losers who tried before and assures her that they will put an end to all this suffering. Rekuro and Katsu are stunned since this Pencilgon is nothing like the Pencilgon they know. The Pencilgon they know once dragged an NPC king behind her carriage in order to lure her enemies. She is also the Pencilgon that tied an NPC princess to a chandelier to bait players into trying to rescue her. The fact that she is having a pleasant conversation with an NPC right now is unbelievable to them. They mockingly wonder if she has developed some kind of soul, but Pencilgon makes them pay the price for laughing at her. Pencilgon wishes she could PK them a bunch of times, but they don't have time as they must prepare for the fight with Weathermon. Pencilgon reveals that she does like to play the game straight sometimes. Something about Setsuna and her story has her invested. Pencilgon seems almost ashamed when she admits to this, but Rekuro thinks it's totally fine. Getting serious about a game is a great thing in his eyes, since everything is more fun when a person takes it seriously. Katso completely agrees and points out that it's pretty much his job since he is a pro gamer. Rekuro is always looking for a way to mock his friend, so he points out that Katso is a pro gamer, but he still hasn't found a single unique thing for himself and SLF. 
The guys begin fighting and are only stopped when Pencilgon laughs at them for reminding her that they are just as stupid as she is. Pencilgon then gets serious and reminds them that they are facing a monster that forces players to level down to level 50. That is something unprecedented in boss battle history, but she is confident that they can beat him. They all agree to take their mission seriously and join hands. Sometime later, Rakuro wakes up and explains that he has been grinding extremely hard ever since he met Setsuna. Every day, he has been having late nights. He has finally managed to reach level 51 and Kato is at level 46. Now he needs to work on his skills and Nemo told them that there was a skill garden for linking skills in Rabatuza. Rakuro remembers how Pencilgon told them that this fight will depend completely on their skills, so he is determined to improve them. Rakuro is then greeted by his mother, Eika, who is glad that he has been keeping up with their agreement over summer break. Rokuro points out that he didn't really have a choice since he didn't want her physically logging him out of his game anymore. Rokuro's younger sister Rumi is really upset about their mother keeping her pet bugs in the kitchen and notices that Rokuro is checking out one of the models in her magazine. The model's name is Toa and according to Rumi, she is the greatest model to ever exist. This Toa name has something to do with the Setsuna name and we learn that Pencilgon is actually Toa. Rumi explains that she has been doing some part-time modeling herself, but she will have to ask their dad to get some more publicity. Their father just so happens to return home, and he shows off the gigantic fish that he caught. His name is Shenji, and his kids are disappointed that they will have to eat fish for every meal again for a while. In their household, they have an agreement, a bit of a rule. For breakfast and dinner on Sundays, they have to eat and talk together as a family. This rule was necessary, since if it didn't exist, then they would all get lost in their own hobbies and never see each other. Shenji needs to clean the fish as soon as possible, but Rumi desperately tells him to do it in the kitchen. Rokuro is sure that they might seem weird to the outside world, but he thinks his family has just found out a way to make things work for themselves. Rokuro then decides that it's time to head back into SLF, as there are only two weeks left until the battle with Weathermon. It will definitely be a difficult fight, especially after the information that Pencilgon gave him. Weathermon is a non-stop source of single-digit frame attacks, instant death moves, and area attacks. However, this information made him realize where the perfect place to practice will be. The trash game where constant glitches make all attacks come at crazy speed. The game is called Berserk Online Passion. Rokuro enters this game, also known as Burp, and points out how it's always so deserted. No one is even there, so Rikuro decides that he will just fight the final boss of the story mode. Just then, he runs into a random player named Dragonfly. This kid is really eager for a fight and explains that he is still new to the game. He hasn't even beat the final boss yet and would love if Rikuro could give him some tips. This game is pretty old, so Rikuro can't believe this kid is a new player and even calls him an endangered species. Rikuro acknowledges that this fight won't be the best for his training but he can't pass up an opportunity to fight such a rare specimen. This is of course a trash game, so they agree that glitches can be used in their fight. Rikuro analyzes this kid and determines that he has an all-around build. This is a type that generates a lot of glitches, but Rikuro assumes that he won't know how to use them. The battle starts, but Rikuro is instantly shocked when Dragonfly charges in. Rikuro reminds himself that this kid is a beginner, so he probably won't be using typical strategies. Rikuro is then surprised even further when this kid draws his fist back just before unleashing the punch motion. This is a technique that allows a player to generate a bug that extends their arm like rubber. If the hit lands, it deals a two-hit combo with double the damage. Its name is Pal Bunker, and Dragonfly is shocked to see that he missed. Rikuro explains that he used a bug move called Yo-Yo, and it throws off a player's avatar texture and hitbox instantly. Rikuro acknowledges that this kid can use some basic bugs, but he explains that there is way more to this game than that. Burp is filled with bugs that players have discovered through trial and research, and he plans to give this kid a full demonstration. Thanks for watching my recap. Sign up to my free newsletter if you want to show some support to the channel. Link is in the description.